hey guys in this video we're going to be looking at carbon nmr i'm going to talk you through the principles behind it how it works important things you need to know and then the bit that you're all interested in is i'm going to walk you through lots of example questions i'm going to slowly talk you through how to answer everything and what sort of things the examiners are going to look for in an answer Carbon NMR can tell us quite a lot of information about a compound. The number of peaks tells us the number of different environments. And the chemical shift tells us the type of chemical environments. Chemical shifts are going to be given on the data sheet, but you should be familiar with reading them. Things over on the far left are generally going to be a carbon double bonded oxygen in a different place to a carbon bonded to a single oxygen. Chemical shift is referenced against standard TMS, tetramethyl silane. It is symmetrical, so every single carbon, every single hydrogen is going to be in the same environment. TMS is non-toxic, it is inert, and because it sits all the way over at zero, it is removed enough from the rest of the spectra that to make interpretation easy. The chemical environment of a particular carbon atom is determined by its location within a compound. It depends on what it is bonded to and what it is next to. Here we can look at a couple of examples. All have the same formula but a different arrangement in space. We're going to look at the different carbon environments. Butanol has four different carbon environments. Whereas as we move through the compounds, we can start to see that the methyl groups become interchangeable and they are in the same carbon environments. If something has four carbon environments, it will have four peaks on a carbon NMR. If something has two carbon environments, it will have two peaks and three carbon environments, three peaks. Predict the number of peaks that each of these compounds would show on a carbon NMR. So we have three amino acids here, isoleucine, leucine and tyrosine. From these we're going to look at all of the different carbon environments. We have two, three, methyl group would be four, five, six. Two, three, four, and then these two methyl groups, you can't tell them apart chemically, so they are in the same chemical environment. One, two, three. First one on the benzene ring, four. Opposite that, five. And then going around the benzene ring, either way, because it's symmetrical, each one on each side is going to be in the same carbon environment. Five chemicals have the molecular formula C5H10O2. Devise a method using infrared and carbon NMR to identify the different carboxylic acids. So the first thing I'm going to do is to identify all of the different compounds. If you've already done the proton NMR video, then you will recognise these compounds where we use proton NMR to identify the different esters. We're going to be looking at the two carboxylic acids in this video. So for this we are interested in the two carboxylic acids down the bottom there. So how can we use infrared to differentiate carboxylic acids from esters? Now, even if you can answer this question just using one bit of information, you have to use all of the information or do all of the parts in the question. If you just answered this using carbon NMR, then you would not get the full marks for this question. You have to use both methods mentioned in the question. So both carboxylic acids will show a broad peak between 2,500 and 3,000 
300 on infrared spectra due to the OH bond which is not present in the esters. Now we can see how we reduce carbon NMR to differentiate between these two carboxylic acids. These two carboxylic acids will have a different number of peaks on carbon NMR due to the different number of carbon environments. 2,3-dimethylpropanoic acid will show three different carbon environments. Whereas 3-methylbutanoic acid will show four different peaks. An aromatic hydrocarbon with the formula C8H10 was tested, used the mass spec and carbon NMR data to identify the compound. First thing I'm going to do is draw out all of the different aromatic hydrocarbons with the formula C8H10. This graph paper, the organic chemistry graph paper, is available for you to download free from my website for you to use in your studies. Now we have our four different compounds. We can look at the mass spec and the NMR data. Now I've told you this before, but even if you can solve this just using one piece of information, you must refer to all the information in your answer. On the mass spec, the MZ peak is 106, confirming the formula. And then the fragment at 91, could be one of two different things. Moving on to the carbon NMR, and there are five different carbon environments in this. The peak shifted at 20 gives us carbon carbon bonds, and the peak shifted between 125 and 140 is indicative of an aromatic hydrocarbon, which we need from the question. Now we're going to go to our original drawings and work out which of these compounds has five different carbon environments. So 1,2-dimethylbenzene, each of the methyl groups is in the same environment, and then moving symmetrically around the benzene ring, we can see that this one has four carbon groups, four carbon environments. Looking at all of the rest of them in exactly the same way, we can see that 1,3-dimethylbenzene is the only one that will produce five different peaks, five different carbon environments on a carbon NMR spectra. This is the last question on here, guys, and well done. You've done some really tricky questions today. Ouch! This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches.